their business directly benefits from a lack of competition. Coke Industries entered the fertilizer market in the early 2000s. As other companies went bankrupt, the Cokes saw an opportunity to take advantage of an industry that was quickly consolidating. Over the next two decades, they bought up competitors, built new plants, and soon became the third largest nitrogen fertilizer producer in the U.S. And this latest acquisition would make them the second largest. I just... I think that that's backwards, and I think that that's a good basis uh, for the Department of Justice to say, no, we're not going to do this. The Coke acquisition isn't a done deal yet. That's because the Federal Trade Commission can block mergers that decrease competition. In the past few decades, they haven't done much to enforce this, but the Biden administration is changing that. Are they really, though? I would also argue that uh, the Federal Trade Commission should also be working towards breaking up other country companies. Like not just stopping acquisitions, but are what are they doing to break up other com companies? Shouldn't banks also be broken up? Wasn't this something that we were arguing during the 2008 crisis that these banks should be broken up? Some of these biggest companies should be broken up. Shouldn't Procter and Gamble be broken up? Shouldn't uh, uh, Nabisco be broken up? Shouldn't Disney be broken up? Shouldn't uh, NBC Universal should that be broken up? A lot of these companies, these corporations, they should not be as big as they are. They're too big. If you control the water and the food of a people, you have control over them all. Billionaires have had control over our food for quite some time now. And the sources of our food growth being taken over by billionaires really not only threatens our government, which they already have control over, but it threatens our very lives because they can push us to move in directions that they want us to versus the direction that we want to move as a people. The question is, do we have freedom? Well, if they control your food and your water, no, they do not. We do not have control over our own destinies, our own lives. And I think this is important to really take into consideration, especially when it comes to wanting to change the system. So there was a particular story that came across uh, shout out to Roger Meadows again for this story. I think this is really important for us to take into consideration. Uh, this is from More Perfect Union. It says, new, just four companies control almost all the fertilizer in America. Prices have tripled since 1980. Farmers are struggling and it could get even worse. Now the Cokes are planning a billion dollar merger to drive up prices for farmers and suffocate rural America even more. This is the free market at work. And who suffers? We suffer. Let's get into it. Coke Industries got a lot of money and that's their job as a corporation to make more money. They're the apex predator. If you really want to boil it down, as far as for me, I've become the prey. Farmers in America's Corn Belt are struggling. Over the past few decades, the fertilizer they depend on to grow our food has become astronomically expensive. There's no competition going on, and it's really, really frustrating. Right now, just four companies, including Coke Industries, control more than 75% of the nitrogen fertilizer market. 
allowing them to drive up prices for farmers and reap record profits. And that's about to get even worse. Coke Industries plans to buy one of the country's largest fertilizer companies. Iowa State Auditor Rob Sands says Iowa taxpayers and Iowa farmers will suffer. This sale could create a monopoly in the industry. The plant Coke wants to buy was built with taxpayer subsidies to create more competition and lower prices. And now here we're in a situation where we had all these tax dollars go into building this plant. And yet now it's potentially going to be owned by the very same company that the plant existed to provide competition for. This is a perfect example of how capitalism works. I want to educate people on something. There is a difference between commerce and capitalism. Commerce is the ability to sell goods and services for a particular price and then get that goods and services for said price. That's commerce. Buying and selling. Commerce. Capitalism is owning the means of production, whether it's by one person or a very small few, and then you pay workers uh, a wage that is less than the value that you produce. And that owners of the means of production run it in a totalitarian fashion. Workers really do not have a say over how the business is operating. That is capitalism. Capitalism also demands that the company or the corporation grows infinitely over and over, year over year, in perpetuity. That's how capitalism operates. So when you have a corporation in the capitalist system, one of the things you need to do is to grow the corporation no matter how much or how little, you try to maximize profits as much as you possibly can. Charles Koch is the CEO of Koch Industries. When you're a CEO, you have a fiduciary responsibility to the shareholders or to the owners, which he is also one of the owners of that corporation. Meaning he has to make money. He has to grow the company year over year in perpetuity. That growth can happen in many different ways. And I spoke about this many times. One of the ways for a company to grow is to increase their prices, which we will see in this, okay? Another one also is to cut benefits of workers, to cut worker pay and salary. It's also to cut workers in general. Another way is to cut also safety measures to save money. And another is also to acquire or to merge, which is mergers and acquisitions of other companies that serve the ends of the corporation in order to maximize more profits. This leads to when companies start to absorb other companies, their competitions, that's what we call monopolization. Meaning getting rid of the competition so that you have more market share so when you have more market share, your profits grow. Meaning it is the complete opposite of what a lot of capitalists say that makes capitalism so good. Capitalism breeds innovation because it supposedly breeds competition. But therefore, if you're constantly growing and eating the competition, therefore there's no more competition, meaning there's no competitiveness. There's no true. Uh, there's no true markets that actually dictate innovation. Capitalism actually works against innovation, and this is what we see. This is what we see with this now. So when people talk about, oh my God, capitalism is the best system, no, it is not. 
And a lot of times people will confuse capitalism with commerce. Commerce still exists even in socialist countries. But a capitalist system does not breed innovation. It does not breed competition. It absorbs the competition and gets rid of the competition so that you only have one person to buy from. Let's continue. We wanted to know how we ended up with a system that creates massive profits for multi-billion dollar companies. Maybe it's already been there. It's been there for a while now. It's called capitalism. <sighs> Let's continue. At the expense of the farmers who grow the food that feeds all of us. And how we might finally be able to fix it. This is all I've ever known is how to farm. Harold Beach is a farmer and a board member of a co-op that sells fertilizer in northeastern Missouri. His farm has been in his family for five generations. I left college and thought, well, I'll come home and farm a while till I decide what I want to do with life. And I guess I'm still trying to decide. Let's go buy the anhydrous plant first where we store it. Anhydrous ammonia is a form of nitrogen fertilizer that's essential for many corn farmers, especially in this area. Right now, Harold's co-op gets it from Iowa Fertilizer Company, the plant Coke Industries wants to buy. Corn's a big user of nitrogen. And so, yeah, it's very important, the pricing of it. You think, well, $50, $70 a ton of product. Well, that's not too bad, but that's in addition to the other five or ten dollars an acre for all the other inputs you add that all up pretty soon there's nothing left corn farmers i'm going to say this there is corn in virtually every single thing that's produced in this country they feed corn to cattle you have different forms of corn in all of your food. High fructose corn syrup, that's made from corn. All these different products from corn is in virtually almost everything you eat, you eat unless you eat a diet of, you know, whole unprocessed foods, you're going to get corn some way or another. So the corn industry is massive. And you have farmers that produce corn. And so if you have one company that owns most of the fertilizer, well, it's bound to affect us down the line. Let's continue on. I mean, you, you're essentially doing it for nothing. For corn farmers, almost 40% of their operating cost is just fertilizer. But it wasn't always like this. It used to be with fertilizer, there was lots of different places handling it. Anhydrous, we could buy it all day for 80 to to $100 a ton. And uh, now it's seven, dollars $800 a ton. Back in the 1980s, there were 46 companies making nitrogen fertilizer. Now, there are just 17. As the industry consolidated, the price farmers pay has more than tripled. But, JB, capitalism breeds innovation. Capitalism breeds, it breeds competition so that you pay less. Yet, the price for it went up 10 times for fertilizer. Breeds innovation? What innovation is this? This isn't. And people go, oh my God, JB, that's not capitalism. That's cronyism. That's like saying that's not, that's not a, that's not a cake. That's just batter. Baby, time was the heating element. And the batter doesn't turn into a cake. It's always been that way you're just seeing it for what it really is. Capitalism 
This is its true form. It's always been this way. The consolidation is part of the system. And profit margins for the biggest players in the industry doubled. All our big corporations talk about free markets and we're just here to do the Lord's work, but no, they like a good fixed market too, just like everybody. And that's capitalism. Capitalism means fixing the market. In 2012, the state of Iowa came up with a plan to fix this. Former Governor Terry Branstad offered an Egyptian fertilizer company huge tax incentives to build a plant in Iowa. It's not very often that a project of this magnitude comes along. This is an investment that's going to be here for 50 years or more. This at the time was the largest single investment of tax incentives into one project in the history of the state of Iowa. It was the first new nitrogen fertilizer plant in the country in 25 years. And it was a real step towards creating more competition in the consolidated industry. Iowa farmers expect to see $740 million annual savings. The idea is we want to make sure that there's lots of competition in the fertilizer industry to keep prices low. Since it opened in 2017, Iowa Fertilizer Company has become the fifth largest producer and a key competitor for Coke Industries. The co-op I do business with typically can buy from that plant from 50 to $75 a ton cheaper. But that could soon change. In December 2023, Iowa Fertilizer Company announced it was being bought by Coke Industries for $3.6 billion. What I'm concerned about here is we had a purpose for investing these tax dollars. And that purpose was to maintain competition so that we would have lower prices for fertilizer for farmers and then lower prices for everybody for groceries. Pers now, I don't care what anybody says. You can try to put bridles on capitalism all you want, but those bridles get shaken off each and every time. We are literally living in a time, living in a time where child labor is coming back into the workplace. They discovered 10 year olds working overnight shifts at McDonald's. That's capitalism. That's how it works. And yeah, they'll try to they'll try to provide bridles to keep the rain in capitalism so that it still kind of works for you, but then you still are able to take advantage of it. Well, guess what? They brought in this company from Egypt. And prices stay kind of good for a while, but then guess what? Coke Industries is like, "All right, we're going to buy it out." When you have a system that is built on exploitation, exploitation, even if you stave off the exploitation, it's a matter of time before it comes back because that's how the system works. That's how the system thrives because the system promotes a small number of people to have control over everything. And those small number of people, in order to keep that control over everything, what do they do? They buy off the politicians. They buy off the Democrats. They buy off the Republicans. There's no difference to them. They will always control everyone. And then once they control that, then no matter what, whoever tries to enter into providing competition to provide lower prices, they will buy them out too or they will do what they can to crush that competition so that you go into obscurity. That's how capitalism works. And people say, well, all we gotta do is, is pass laws so that they can do this, so that they can you know, keep the competition in place, whereas the politicians are bought.
And then, and then if you try to get another politician in there, well, the people who don't want to be bought, they're completely shut out from even entering. That's, that's how the system works. Personally, I think that taxpayers should feel like they're getting robbed in this deal. The Kochs have long argued that the government should stay out and let the free market dictate the economy. What's driving the inequality? It's the government picking winners and losers and, and, and stifling competition, stifling innovation, and, uh, and, and making poor people permanently poor. But so that was Charles Koch. One of the masters of both parties, one of the masters that runs this country, one of the corporate parasites that I refer to all the time, talking about government should stay out of the way because they shouldn't be picking winners and losers. Government is actually supposed to be the referee. Government's supposed to go, hey, you can't do that. But what happens when the referee is bought? That's how capitalism works. Capitalism, you buy the referee so that you win every single time. Capitalism is the system where you're allowed to get, slip money to the referee. And it's been that way. It's been that way ever since the beginning of this country. The free market is just a, a, a phrase that's used by capitalists to keep their power there and to go against anybody that tries to check that said power. Their business directly benefits from a lack of competition. Coke Industries entered the fertilizer market in the early 2000s. As other companies went bankrupt, the Coke saw an opportunity to take advantage of an industry that was quickly consolidating. Over the next two decades, they bought up competitors, built new plants, and soon became the third largest nitrogen fertilizer producer in the US. And this latest acquisition would make them the second largest. I just I think that that's backwards. And I think that that's a good basis uh, for the Department of Justice to say, no, we're not going to do this. The Coke acquisition isn't a done deal yet. That's because the Federal Trade Commission can block mergers that decrease competition. In the past few decades, they haven't done much to enforce this. But the Biden administration is changing that. Are they really, though? I would also argue that uh, the Federal Trade Commission should also be working towards breaking up other country companies. Like not just stopping acquisitions, but are what are they doing to break up other com companies? Shouldn't banks also be broken up? Wasn't this something that we were arguing during the 2008 crisis that these banks should be broken up? Some of these biggest companies should be broken up. Shouldn't Procter and Gamble be broken up? Shouldn't uh, uh, Nabisco be broken up? Shouldn't Disney be broken up? Shouldn't uh, NBC Universal should that be broken up? A lot of these companies, these corporations, they should not be as big as they are. They're too big. But that's how the capitalist system works. And in order for them to get as big as they are, they have to buy the politicians so that bureaucracies like the FTC don't go after them. What good is an antitrust law if you're not enforcing the law? By the way, 
if the Obama administration didn't do anything worthwhile in that endeavor, what makes you think that Joe Biden's going to do it? I don't trust him. He's in bed with the corporations. When President Biden came into office, he made it a top priority to make sure we were turning the page on what has been 40 years approach of a more hands off way of enforcing the antitrust laws. Hands off over over the last 40 years. Over the last 40 years. So from 84 to now. Let me see. You had Reagan. Bush won. So uh, between Reagan and Bush won, that is, let me see. So that's eight years. Then you had eight years of Clinton. So yeah, eight years of Bush and Reagan. And I'm talking about Reagan's second term and Bush's for in Bush's first only term, Bush, Bush won. Then you had Clinton's eight years. You had Bush Jr.'s eight years. So that's 16 years Republican. Then you had eight years of Obama. That was 16 years of both Democrats. Then you have four years of Trump. Now that's 16 years to 20 years. And then you have four years of Biden. Well, about to be four years of Biden. So that's another 20 years. So 20 and 20 equal 40 years. 40 years between equally spent between Republican and Democrat. So they both are culpable in this. The math is mathing. During that period, we've seen consolidation, huge waves of mergers and acquisitions. Um, and all too often, we hear that as a result, our markets are not working for people, for regular people. FTC Chair Lena Khan came to Iowa in April to listen to what farmers, including Harold, had to say about what this merger would mean for them. Uh, my name is David Weaver, I'm a farmer. I cannot tell you how irate I was when I got my Farm Bureau spokesman, and I'm a member of Iowa Farmers Union, but I'm also a member of Farm Bureau, and it said that this plant was going to be sold to the COVID. And it was like it was good news. <laughs> and it stinks. It's awful. That plant came online in the last 10 years. That has driven competition. Losing that competition is going to hurt, particularly those of us in that southeast corner of the state, northeast corner of the other state, Missouri down there. It means something in dollars and cents in our production costs. But you're the referee in the ball game. We need that. That's, that's what you do. And so I'd encourage you to be fearless and courageous and do the right thing. Thank you. These listening sessions are the first step in the FTC's process for deciding whether it will block the Coke purchase. When we've done our review, if we determine that we think the acquisition violates the antitrust laws, violates the laws that say you can't do a merger if it's going to substantially lessen competition, then we have the chance to go file a lawsuit in court, explain to the court why we think the deal violates the antitrust laws, and then it's ultimately the courts that decide, should we let it go through, should we not let it go through? There are a lot of problems with our agriculture industry, and it's going to take a lot of big swings to undo the damage of decades of unregulated consolidation. But the FTC has a real chance to make a difference here, one that could set a new precedent for how the government can keep corporate power in check and protect farmers. A lot of people in agriculture really truly do see agriculture as a way of life. It isn't a job, it isn't a profession, it's part of what you do, it's part of how you were raised. And the idea that we are making it harder and harder for people to just be farmers and having that way of life, to me as an Iowan, as a Midwesterner, uh, that doesn't sit right with me either. In the scheme of the United States or the world, it's not a big deal. But 
for me right here in Northeast Missouri, it's a big deal. If I'm the guy drowning, it's a hell of a deal. I'd like a life jacket. So, yeah, uh, I think this is really important that we focus on who really is trying to take over uh, basically our food production. And you have industries like uh, the Koch brothers that really want to take that over. You know, and I think it's important that we pay more attention to uh, these, these corporations. Um, one of the things that I also wanted to bring up was how the best way to go up against this is really if you still do want to do something in regards to electoral politics, don't go through politicians because politicians can be bought. But you can go through ballot measures. There's ballot initiative states that you can do and propose ballot measures in order to make it so that these companies, you know, you have right of first refusal so that companies like, for instance, this this Iowa uh, fertilizer plant, uh, the, 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 the workers get right of first refusal so they can get to own it versus, you know, it being acquired by Coke Industries. Because ultimately, I honestly do think that you cannot, uh, it, you know, it, a, a worker movement would force a lot of these companies to be more worker centered. So let me see. Let me see this. Uh, I'm gonna share this really quick. Coke Industries is massive. Uh, so let me share this here. This is Coke Industries profile. It says Coke Industries Incorporate operates as a diversified holding company. The company focuses on renewable fuels, polymers and fibers, minerals, ranching, fertilizers, refining and chemicals and consumer product business. Coke Industries serves customers worldwide. So that's pretty much Coke Industries in a nutshell. So I want to share uh, these facts about Coke Industries as well. By the way, they're huge mega donors to the to the duopoly. So this is from Greenpeace. It says Coke Industries Inc. is the second largest privately held company in the United States. A conglomerate of more than 20 companies with $115 billion in annual sales. It says Coke operates in nearly 60 countries and 100,000 employees globally, about 60,000 of which are employed by the United States. Coke Industries Inc. is the second largest privately held company. Uh, now, David Coke said, my joke is that we're the biggest company you've never heard of. It says Coke operates a variety of industrial businesses, predominantly in oil and gas exploration, pipelines and refining, in chemical and fertilizer production, in trading both physical fossil fuel products as well as commodity futures and derivatives, cattle and game ranching, forestry and timber products, electronics, industrial glass and various consumer products. So all the things that really revolve around our lives. So it talks about their Coke industry primary uh, subsidiaries. Uh, so it says Flint Hill Resources, Coke's primary oil company, operating major oil refineries, oil and gas supply stations, pipelines, corn, biofuels. So the corn industry is also connected in biofuels chemicals and polymers, 
Flint Hills major oil and gas refineries process 670,000 barrels of crude oil daily. So, of course, they're connected to the fossil fuel industry. So, when it comes to wanting to drill for oil, who makes money from that? From the oil refineries. It will be the coke industries, which also benefits them either with Joe Biden in office or Donald Trump in office. They benefit. So this is why I say the duopoly serves us no way. Minnesota, Texas, Alaska. Um, now they also own Georgia Pacific. It says Georgia Pacific is Coke's largest subsidiary producing timber and construction products, paper and pulp, consumer tissue and hygiene products, chemicals and cellulose. Georgia Pacific products include a number of brands like recognizable retail products, including Quilted Northern, Angel Soft, Brawny Paper Towels, Vanity Fair, and Dixie Cups. That's Coke Industries. Investa includes consumer products like Stain Master Carpet, Lycra, and Cool Max Clothing products, specialty chemical and polymers, upholstery products for houses and automobiles. In 2009, Barack Obama sworn in the 44th president on United president on a Coke Industries and Vesta carpet. Coke supply and trading trades physical commodities and derivatives, markets liquefied natural gas and runs at 80,000 barrels per day at Rotterdam refinery in the Netherlands. Coke Pipeline Company operates 40,000 miles of oil and gas pi U.S. pipelines in the U.S., including pipelines that carry tar, sands, crude from Canada to Minnesota and Wisconsin, where Coke's Flint Hill Resources owns oil refineries. Until recently, the company owned 3% stake in the trans Alaska pipeline system. So it talks about their fertilizer. Uh, Coke is a multi-billion dollar subsidiary, subsidiary and one of the world's largest producers and marketers of fertilizer. According to Coke, Coke fertilizer plant Chase Coke is Charles Coke's son. So this is Coke. Coke Wealth is a vast majority of Coke Industries assets are controlled by Charles G. and David H. Coke, two of four sons of the company's founder who each own 42% of the company's stock. According to 2015 Forbes ranking, the Coke brothers are tied to six richest per, per are tied for the sixth richest person in the world at $42.9 billion each, more than Michael Bloomberg, George Soros, and Jim and Alice Walton of the Walmart Fortune. Bloomberg estimates that each brother's current wealth currently exceeds $51 billion. The Cokes each made over $4 billion in 2013 alone. We're talking about 11 years ago. So these are the people that are trying to control our food. And when people talk about, oh, my God, George Soros, the Cokes are literally, well, one of them died. But Charles Koch is bigger than George Soros. And so all of them, all of them are parasites. And they all are the bosses of a Donald Trump, of a Joe Biden. They're the bosses. And this is why it's so important that we, you know, walk away from the duopoly and walk away from these people who are constantly uh, so that we're always, uh, we're always,
always exploit it from these people. Now, there was a tweet that I wanted to share. Um, somebody said this as well. Could have swore I had it. Ah, I got it. So let me share this as well. I do not trust Joe Biden. But this is what Gabenga Ajalor says. He says, to combat this concentration, the Biden-Harris administration made $900 million available to strengthen the domestic supply chain through the fertilizer production expansion program. To date, the USDA has funded 57 projects in 29 states for a total of $251 million. Last month, I had the honor of visiting True Organics Products in Boardman, Oregon, which produces organic fertilizer. They are using the FPREP grant to expand production and increase fertilizer availability to local farmers in Oregon and Washington. This is all part of the Biden-Harris administration bottom-up and middle-out agenda to support domestic supply chain, thereby strengthening local communities and advancing rural prosperity. Proud to be doing this work. So he's saying that the Biden administration is working to, you know, assist with providing true competition. Now, my thing is, I would be pushing for farming co-ops to get more subsidies. If you're really about this, push farming co-ops to also get discounts for fertilizer. I mean, that's that's an option. I think that would be worthwhile. Um, and so I think that this would be good for the farmers. But ultimately, we just have to end this system. Push for more uh, co-op farming, push for more co-ops to be in the in the supply chain. So the, the fertilizer producers also need to be co-op owned. Right. Seed producers need to be co-op owned. We need to get the seed producing out of the hands of Monsanto. Monsanto is a demonic organization. And I say that with confidence because they are literally taking our farmers for a ride. And also, we're talking about farmers in general who are being taken for a ride. But what about also black farmers and more specifically? how they're being affected too. Because I talked about this on RBN a couple of weeks back, how black farmers were being discriminated against by the USDA and how they won a case against the USDA. So we need to push for more co-op businesses and you can actually do this via, you know, uh, citizen ballot initiatives in order to be able to give uh, the right of first refusal to businesses in order to push for more subsidies for co-op businesses because that actually increases entrepreneurship among the citizens. So I think that would be a, a good thing for us to push more towards. And by doing it through worker, uh, through citizen ballot initiatives, you're circumventing politicians and doing it through direct democracy. And also increasing in the unionization and cooperatization of these workers, whether they're farmers, ranchers, people who work in adjacent businesses, I think that would be best for all of us. So my hope is that when it comes to the farmers, that we help them to do more uh, so that they can be more independent and free from the shackles of exploitation in this capitalist system because we need our food, man. We need our food. Thank you so very much for watching my channel and I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. 
if you wish to support the channel further so I can keep bringing you content that is educational and informative, you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash jvfon. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much, and you can watch more of my content here. Mwah. More head kisses, and have a beautiful day.